when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he started his mission in preaching and teaching Islam, one of his biggest opponent or enemy was Abu Lahab. And who was Abu Lahab? His uncle. You see, remember, our enemies could be our uncles and our aunts. You remember that? You see, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the guy over the road. His uncle. When he called all the people and said, if I was to tell you people, he called all the people to Quraysh, the Prophet wasallam. He said, if I was to tell you that there are enemies, he went up on the mountain. He said, if I was to tell you that there are enemies beyond this mountain, would you believe me? They said, yes. And then he said, I want you to believe in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And I want you to be aware of the torture and the punishment that will happen on a day of Qiyamah that is very near a day of judgment. And his uncle Abu Lahab, go check the tafsir of Surah Lahab, or Al-Masad as they call it. His uncle, his own uncle. See, sometimes our own relatives could mislead us in the name of sustenance and wealth and richness. His uncle told him, what are you talking about? You will perish. You will not succeed. Abuse him. And his uncle said, I will use my wealth. And I will use my children. And my property and wealth. To save myself from whatever tortures and calamities and disasters you're talking about tomorrow. Nothing of you could harm me. You will perish. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. We all read that surah, Tabbat yada bismillah rahman rahim. Tabbat yada abi lahabi wa tabba. Abu lahab. Allah says, his wealth, ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Let it be known. That the wealth and the children and the power and the richness that Abu Lahab has, nothing will save him. So a lot of us think it's our wealth and what we have and what we do will save us and give us success. Go read the Quran, little small surah. You know, again when I look at the clock, well this one is not working so I've got to look under the fan there to keep track of the time, inshallah. Um, in the line of Barakat, and faith in Allah and tawakkal. This surah, when this surah was revealed, stating how Abu Lahab and his wife will be destroyed and will be burnt in hell, in hell, and all the nine yards, and time does not permit. So I want to conclude, inshallah. The wife of Abu Lahab took a stone, a rock in her hand. And she went towards the Kaaba to look for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to let him have it, and Auzu Billah, to stone him, and say, "You, a verse of your book, you have bring forth a poetry and a poem against me and my husband. Are going to destroy him." So she headed off to destroy the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he was sitting with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu taala anhu. And Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who saw her. And when he saw her coming, very interesting, very interesting, very powerful verse. I was mentioning it last night in the, in the dhikr that we have on Thursday nights, which most of you don't come to. Um, when, when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa look, she's coming with a rock, she's coming to attack you. Hear what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said: "Inna ha lantarani, she will not be able to see me." Allahu Akbar. Go check the hadith. Inna ha lantarani, she will not be able to see me. And do you know what he did? If we believe in Allah and His Rasul, he recited an ayah from the Quran, chapter seventeen. Verse 45. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. 
Allah says, I see that's why I was talking about in the beginning of the khutbah about our piety. Last week we spoke about the Quran and the Salah and the Barakat. Allah says, and when thou wa idha qara'atul Quran, and when you read the Quran, wa ja'alna baynaka wa bayna alladhina la yu'minuna bil akhirah. Allah says that he will create between you and the people who don't believe. Look at the word is hijaba. You know you talk about ladies wearing hijab? What is hijab? Hijab na, a kind of parda. A veil. So you don't see her beauty and her face. Or her body and her shape. Look at the word here. It's chapter 17 verse 45 if you don't believe. That's why I like to quote from it. Or you could take the CD after. Allah says that he will create a veil, a hijab, a parda between you and the people who don't believe so they will not be able to harm you. Allahu Akbar. And she came with the stone to harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who was there. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was there and she couldn't see him. That is where he had his tawakkal and trust in Allah. Today we would have talked about putting up rocks and putting up bricks and putting up a wall so the enemies don't find us because we have lost the faith in Allah. We don't have that tawakkal and that taqwa. That's why when it comes to our risk and our sustenance and our life and brothers and sisters as we conclude